rare syndrome in kids that could be linked to COVID-19, this inflammatory syndrome. I want to get into this now. Joining me now, Senior Vice President and Chair of Pediatric Services at Northwell Health, including Cohen Children's Medical Center, Dr. Charles um, Schlein. Dr. Schlein, thanks so much uh, for joining us. By the way, he is also a professor of pediatrics at Hofstra's Zucker School of Medicine. I, I want to talk a little bit about um, the Senate hearing from yesterday in, in just a moment, but I first want to address this rare inflammatory, mysterious illness that children are now coming down with um, and its connection to COVID-19. How much do you actually know about this illness? And how many cases have you specifically seen in your hospital? We know a lot about the illness as it relates to Kawasaki syndrome, a Kawasaki's disease, in that we've been taking care of patients my entire professional career of 40 years. Um, and we are just learning about this association. These children are presenting with something that looks very much like Kawasaki's disease. And I think as you can see on your screen, uh, you know, things like rash, many of them are presenting with GI symptoms like abdominal pain or diarrhea. And unfortunately, there's a lot of inflammation related to this syndrome uh, associated with COVID-19 uh, affecting other organs at times. The, you know, the, the real problem with Kawasaki's and even this association is a coronary artery issue where uh, children do have coronary aneurysms at time, and that's why it's so important that they be seen early because this is actually treatable. Uh, unlike COVID-19, where we all know that there is no treatment at this point, uh, with coronary aneurysms, uh, there is a very specific treatment with intravenous immunoglobulin and high dose aspirin, sometimes steroids, that will almost always treat the, these coronary aneurysms. So with that, how worried should parents um, be? How important is it to identify um, whether or not your child was contracted this syndrome early? It's actually critically important that parents stay on top of the kids and call their physician, call their pediatrician, or come to an emergency room if, in fact, uh, their children have persistent fevers of more than a couple of days. Uh, have some of these other symptoms with diarrhea, with rashes, with conjunctivitis. And if any of those are occurring, particularly with the protracted fever, then uh, they need to call their doctor. Because again, getting to the doc, getting this diagnosis done, uh, they get echocardiograms with cardiology, uh, they have a treatable disease. And uh, so it's really quite important that parents stay on top of it and uh, actually bring their children uh, to medical attention. Dr. Schlein, just quickly here, um, with regard to Fauci's assessment from yesterday and his testimony, do you agree that, f that schools may need to remain closed um, through the fall in light of this new development? Well, it's hard to say. You know, what's interesting about this disease is that these children, for the most part, are coming after they were infected, most likely, most of the kids that we've seen have been testing sometimes positive for the virus itself, but almost always testing positive for antibody, meaning that this is actually a post-infectious disease. And so uh, we're seeing a lot of it now after the peak of the disease has already occurred, two or three or four weeks later. So, you know, that's a call that uh, Dr. Fauci and the governor, uh, you know, in each state is going to have to make. Uh, but clearly, uh, this is something we are concerned about. All right, Dr. Charles Schlein, thank you so much for weighing in on this. Very much appreciate it, sir.